Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Broken Bow First Assembly of God. My name is Pastor Tyler, and I want to thank you for joining us today for our special live stream Sunday morning service. We are so glad that you chose to join us from wherever you're logging on from today. We are excited to hear a word from our pastor and to worship together. Due to the current global situation, we have decided to cancel all upcoming activities for the next week. This includes our Sunday morning service, Wednesday night activities, and our connect groups. We will keep you updated, so please follow along with us on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. Since our service today is exclusively online, we want to remind you to please stay faithful in your giving. You can give in a variety of ways by mailing your check, paying online, or by text give. Please follow the instructions on the screen for how you can give today. Right now, we are going to go into a short time of worship. And now this may be different, but we would just invite you to enter into God's presence to seek Him and pursue Him no matter where you're sitting today. Whether it's your couch, your living room, your kitchen, your car, we invite you to worship with us today and to worship our King. When you walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. And nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. We worship you. We love you. We'll never stop. Can't live without you, Jesus. We love you. We can't get. Jesus, 
Good morning, church. I hope you're doing well today, this Sunday morning, our second Sunday of quarantine. I'm so glad you joined us for our online service today. And may God bless you in your homes or wherever you're watching this at today. Uh, again, this is a new adventure for all of us, and we're just trying to navigate through it. So thank you for your patience. You know, I've said it before, the, the most difficult thing for me is not seeing you I miss seeing your face because I love you, and I hope you're having a good time, a safe time, as you're staying at home, away from all the activity going on. It's out of the love that we have for you that we're doing these services like this. Uh, the governor this past Tuesday issued a new mandate for not meeting together in groups of 10 or more, and he has extended the date to April the 30th. So it looks like we're going to have about five or six more weeks of this. I know that sounds like a lifetime. Uh, it, it, it really is a lifetime. But we'll just go back to the scripture that says, this too shall come to pass. So we're just going to believe that this, this too will pass, and we're believing God for great things in the future. We look forward to the time we can come back together as one church body in one place, and uh, what an exciting time that's going to be. I want to encourage you to continue to stay up with our Facebook pages. Uh, that way we can keep you updated on what's happening in our church, and the latest news, perhaps prayer requests. If you have any prayer requests, please post them where we can see them and pray with them with you. And uh, I also want to thank you for your faithfulness during this time. Uh, ministry goes on. We are, are working hard here at the church. In fact, we're probably working harder than ever uh, just to continue to keep you updated and connected. So if you need anything, please uh, let us know. Reach out to us here at the church, and I know that God will be faithful to you. Um, if you need to give your tithes and offerings, you can do that in three or four different ways. You can give through mail, or you can drop it by the church. Just honk, and we'll come out and get it from you. Or you can do it through text giving, or you can also do it through our online giving on our websites. So please take advantage of those things, and we appreciate it, and God will bless you for your faithfulness. I'm starting a series today as we lead up to Easter time, but I also wanted to speak just this one more time about the, the current situation that we're in. Perhaps you remember the nine coal miners who were rescued several years ago in Pennsylvania. They spent more than three days trapped 240 feet underground, not knowing if they would ever see the light of day again, or whether their water-filled mine that they had been living in and working in 
would become a tomb for them. Watching the drama unfold, we learned that the miners had accidentally breached the wall of an old abandoned mine shaft filled with millions of gallons of water. As their own tunnel began to flood, they retreated to an air pocket only four feet high when they crouched together there in the cold, wet, and darkness, praying and waiting for someone, someone to come. And finally, someone did. Someone did come. First, a six-inch shaft was drilled to pump air into the, into the area they were in that kept the water at bay. It was also provided oxygen for the men to breathe and, provide, and help protect them from hypothermia. Then giant pumps were used to draw water out of the mine, preventing the water level from rising up. And finally, a shaft was drilled large enough to drop a rescue capsule and bring the men up. One at a time, almost 80 hours after their ordeal began, one at a time, all alive, all healthy, all grateful to be alive. A question came to my mind, what sustained these men during this living nightmare that they were going through? Cold, wet, hungry, and exhausted, not knowing what was going on above them and not knowing if they would ever see their families again. What kept them going during that time? What sustained them? What made them keep fighting? What sustained the workers, the rescue workers that were working to help, try to help them out? And what sustained these miners' families? Gave them peace. What kept them from giving up? What kept them from giving in to despair? I thought about all those things, and, and the only answer I could come up with, with was hope. Hope. Hope is what brought them through. And we can't understand the impact that hope has on our life. We can't underestimate it. Webster Dictionary defines hope as this, to cherish a desire with anticipation, to want something to happen or to be true to wish for something to happen. Hope is an optimistic state of mind that is based on an expectation of positive outcomes with respect to events and circumstances in one's life or the world at large. That's a large definition, I'm sure, but really it's simply defined as a, a, an anticipation, a hope for something, a desire for something to happen to be true. You know, this definition would generally work in most dictionaries and most applications of life, but it's not necessarily the case when you examine the word hope in the Hebrew or the Greek. While it's true that having an expectation is part of those definitions, the depth of the meaning in the Hebrew and Greek text is not fully captured in our definitions. Let me give you a few examples. In both the Old Testament and the New Testament, there are different words used for hope depending on how it is to be used. In the New Testament, where I want to look at today, there are two primary words for hope in the Greek. One is a noun, and one is a verb. The first word meaning to expect, or confide, or trust in. It's a verb that means to hope in, to have hope in something. The second word is a noun. This word means to anticipate with pleasure, with expectation, or confidence. It means to have a favorable and confident expectation, a forward look with assurance. It has to do with us putting our trust in God and, and uh, trusting Him to guide us through the unseen things that we face every day in life and with the unknown things that we will face in the future. It's trusting God that God will help us during those times. It's our hope in Him. This is the word used in our text today. And it comes out of Romans chapter 15. One of my favorite verses. Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says this, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Wow, what a powerful verse. 
May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Hope, as used in Romans, goes deeper than the hope that we generally think of in our daily lives. It means a lot more than just wishing for something to happen. It's about taking that extra step to actually place confidence and trust in what you are hoping for. It goes beyond just believing something. It is putting your trust in something. You know, our world is experiencing a very uncertain time right now. Some have likened it to the days of the Great Depression. That was a few more days before I was born, but some of you may remember those days. We're, exp we're experiencing those uncertain times that they experienced back in those days. And I believe we will recall these days just as many recall those days. It was a day, a day that was defining a time, a defining moment in the history of our world. There's, there is a, in our society today, in our world today, there is a cloud of hopelessness in the air. And, and to be honest with you, that's not an over-dramatization of the events that we have for the last few weeks. It is simply this pastor's perspective of the times that we're living in. With all the difficulties and struggles and the pains, the losses and the frustration there is in life, it doesn't take much for us to lose our hope. It doesn't take much. We try our best to continue trusting in God. We want to try to trust Him. But so much of this world and in, in our individual lives tells us to just give up. To just give up. What use is there? What point is there to continue on? So let's just give up. And unfortunately, many have expressed that attitude in today's time. Someone once said, we can live 40 days without food, eight days without water, four minutes without air, but only a few seconds without hope. Does that not tell us the importance of hope? Hope is the sustaining element in our life today. How do we understand and therefore respond to the world, to the kind of world that we're living in today, how do we respond to that? Well, let's look deeper at Paul and what he had to say about this word called hope. True hope, number one, has one source. It says this right here, may the God of hope, Paul is saying, I, I believe he's saying that God is the dispenser of hope. He is the fountain of hope in our life. We live in a time of desperate measures. People are in need of hope today. They need something to give them hope. Many today, I think, are lost. They're broken. They're hurting. People today are looking for answers. They're looking for someone who has answers. Well, I tell you, church, we have the answer today, and that answer is Jesus. Hope doesn't live without problems. And hope is not exempt from circumstances. Yet we serve a God that is able to give us this hope when all else seems lost, God gives us hope. I recall three stories in the Bible where it seemed like all hope was lost. First of all, the woman with the issue of blood had all hope lost. She had done everything she could. She had tried every means possible in her life to find a remedy for her situation. She was looking for answers, and she had spent all she had but she declared, she heard that Jesus was passing by, and she declared that if she could just touch the very hem of his garment, she would be made well. Well, she struggled and moved her way through, maneuvered her way through the crowd one day, and, and she pushed and crawled and made her way close enough to Jesus that she could simply touch the hem of, her, of his garment. And when she did, immediately life was renewed. Hope was restored. And I think about Martha, Lazarus, his sister. She had lost all hope. She had called for Jesus to come and take care of her brother because she knew that if Jesus would come, Lazarus would be healed. But Jesus waited four days, the Bible says, and during that time frame, Lazarus died. He, was, he died and he was even buried 
in an old tomb. And Martha, knowing the future, knew that all she had was a future hope. All she had was a future hope. But when Jesus finally arrived, he spoke to her not of a future hope only, but of a present hope. And Lazarus was called back to life. And again, hope was restored. I think again about the widow of Nain who was burying her only son. Her husband had died and now her son had died and she didn't have anything left. And in doing so, she had lost all hope. Lost all hope. But when the Lord saw her, I love this part of it. It says, when the Lord saw her, her, his heart went out to her. Aren't you glad his heart goes out to us when we're hurting? And he reached out and he touched that coffin that that young boy was in. And immediately the boy was awake and alive and life was restored. Jeremiah 31, 17 says, there is hope in your future, says the Lord. Our hope isn't only about the future, though. There's a hope that is here for your present. God gives us a glorious hope for the future. Yes, he does. But he also gives us a present day hope for this hour in which we live. The Bible says that Jesus is a present help or hope in our time of need. That's the news we need to hear today. In these troubling times, what you and I need more than anything else is to hear the hope that Jesus is giving us today. But the reality is when you're going through trials and you're going through heartache and you're going through pain and you don't know what tomorrow might bring, you can't see hope. You don't see the finish line. And all you see is hopelessness. Listen to me this morning. There is no hopeless situation. There is hope that overshadows all the darkness that life brings. No situation is hopeless as long as there is a power of God working in our lives. The second thing I see in Paul's writing there is he said, May the God of hope, listen to this, fill you with joy and peace, listen, as you trust in him. That's the key, as you trust in him. He says, May the God of hope fill you. Now, what does he want to fill you with? He wants to fill you with joy and peace. Now, that's something that's missing in our society today because all the struggles that we face and all the pain that we're going through and all the uncertainty that we're facing in life, we need joy and peace in this hour. And God wants to fill you with that today. Paul was in prison during times of his life, and oftentimes we find him bound in chains. But in spite of all of Paul's suffering, he was filled with joy. Joy is a virtue, not simply an emotion. It is grounded upon God himself, and it's derived entirely from God. Psalms 1611 says, In thy presence there is fullness of joy. In thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Listen to this. In thy presence, in God's presence, he is telling us that there is fullness of joy. We have joy when we walk with Him. We have joy when we are entertained by God's presence in our life. God wants to give you that joy today in the midst of your struggles and your, your hopelessness. And He also says, I want to give you peace. Think about two things with peace. I think about the peace of God and the peace with God. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, we read, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have peace with God. In other words, our souls are secure because we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Then he talks about the peace of God. Peace of God is that inner calmness that, is, that comes from God's presence in our life, from God's promises to us and God's power working in us. That calmness that God can bring is a peace that passes all understanding. Paul says that the purpose of that is, this, is that you may overflow or abound with hope. May the God of hope fill you with joy and peace so that you may overflow, abound with hope. You know, sometimes we're overflowed with problems. 
But what would it be like if we were overflowed with hope? What would it be like if our life overflowed with hope? Now, one definition of abound is to have more than enough or more than you need. I don't know if I've ever had more than I need of hope or more than I need or more than I and enough of hope. But it means to superabound, to have in excess. Now, what he is saying there is God wants to fill you with this, this joy and peace that you may overflow with hope that you may share that with other people. Now, that's what our world needs today because there are so many today that are hurting that you and I have that peace and that joy that they need, that hope that they need, and we need to share it with them. We need to share that joy and that peace and that hope with those who are hurting. We're not to keep it to ourselves, this refreshing hope that we have. When it overflows, it gets on everybody. When you pour a glass of water and it overflows, it gets all over the place. Well, that's what God wants to do with your joy and your peace and your hope today. He wants it to overflow that you can share it with other people. The idea is that God of hope is not going to give us all joy and peace that we need it only for ourselves, but we are going to be given this extra measure that we can give it to other people, that we can give it to other people. That's what we need to do today. With all the joy and the peace that God has given us in our lives, we need to share that with those who are hurting in our, in our community. Those who are, are hurting and that feel that sense of hopelessness in their lives, we need to share the hope. The hope we have is in God. The hope we have comes through God and comes in God, and we need to share that with those that we come in contact with. If we really believe that God is the source of hope in our life, we will share that hope with other people. If we truly believe that God, that we get our hope and our joy and our peace from God, then we'll share that with other people. We'll want to we'll share that experience with others so that they may know that same joy. Because there's so many today that are looking for hope. They're hurting. They're searching. And they don't know where to look. But we've got the answer today. Other men see only a hopelessness or a hopeless end, but the Christian re rejoices in an endless hope. Other men see only a hopeless end, but the Christian rejoices in an endless hope. We've got an endless hope. It overflows in our life and wants to pour out His Spirit into us that we can pour it out to someone else. We can face the future with confidence because we have the God of hope. We have the God of hope. We don't know what the future holds. I said that this will go on until April the 30th, but really and truly it could go on longer than that. We don't have any idea what the future holds. They've talked in the news about it going on through the summertime. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what the economy is going to do. We don't know what the stock market is going to do. We don't know how the grocery shelves are going to be full or be empty. We don't know if we're going to have toilet paper tomorrow. But one thing we do know, we know who holds the future. We don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. We have hope. We have hope today because God is our constant companion. He walks with us. He's always there with us. And we have hope because God is our constant companion. We can trust in His promises. We can trust in His presence. And we can trust in His protection today. And most of all, we can trust in His provision. He wants to meet your need. And He wants to give you peace and joy in the middle of our circumstances right now. Would you let me pray with you today? Heavenly Father, there may be some today that are hearing this message that are overwhelmed with hopelessness, that are struggling, Lord, they don't know what tomorrow holds. They don't know what they're going to face tomorrow. They don't know the circumstances or the situations they may find themselves in. God, they don't know if they're going to have a job. They don't know if they're going to be laid off. Father, I pray today for those who are struggling. I pray that, Lord, they would, they would know this hope that we have in Christ Jesus. I pray, God, those who are, have businesses in our town, our community, 
those businesses are struggling right now to keep the doors open. And God, I pray right now that you'd just encourage those business owners to be faithful to you and God, just to trust you because you are the God of hope today. God, I pray that you would just surround them, undergird them, and encourage them with your love. God, I pray right now for our leaders throughout our state, our nation, our own community, Lord. God, I pray for our pastors and every church in our community, God. I pray that you would just lift those pastors up, give them strength, give them wisdom to make the right decisions to, to direct their church, oh God, during this difficult time. God, I pray that no church would suffer the loss of finances through this difficulty season. God, I thank you today that we can trust in you and we can have peace in you and we can have, most of all, we can have joy in the middle of all this stuff. We can have joy and peace even in the middle of this hopelessness because we have the God of hope with us. In Christ's name we pray, amen. God bless you, church. Don't forget to check us out on Wednesday night. We'll be having a new post for our Bible study on Wednesday night. Untold Bible stories, untold stories. Come and join us. God bless you. Have a great, great day.